Hi, and welcome to the Fundamentals of Digital Painting. My name is Nas Peters, and in this video we are going to paint the shield, which will be made of wooden material. Tree barks can have a lot of different textures and patterns, and each would create a different visual for the shield. I will be using a bark texture with quite a bit of indents and bumps. I found a piece of bark in the garden and took a picture of it to use as reference. I am also going to paint over it which you can do as well to give it a try before applying this on the shield itself. It's included in the resource file, so you can grab it. To load in a file, go into File, Open, and then locate the file on your computer. Click OK and it'll appear in Photoshop. If you want to load just a small selection of the photo onto your illustration's canvas, use the rectangular marquee tool to create a selection. Be sure to select the Move tool afterwards to drag and drop the selection onto the illustration's canvas. Resize if need be with the Transform selection. Remember to hold down Shift so the selection doesn't deform. Once complete, lower the opacity on the layer the picture is in so it's easier to paint over. Select the Brush tool and choose a very dark brown color. My brush size is set at 5 and the opacity on it is between 50 and 60%. Create a new layer on top of the reference one and start drawing out shapes that follow the bark texture. Close them off as individual shapes, leaving gaps between each. They definitely don't have to be neat, you want them to look organic. Now heighten the opacity of the brush back to 100% and fill in the gap. When done, pick a light brown color right off the canvas or use the color picker to choose one. Leave the brush size and opacity as it is and paint along the outer edge of the shapes. Then size the brush down to about 2 and choose a darker brown to add in some texture scratches on the center of the shapes. Continue on to choose a very light color and make the brush size a teensy bit bigger if need be. With this we are going to create a thin highlight on the outer edge of the shapes. Create a new layer and make the brush bigger again. I kept on using the same color as we'll be changing the opacity on the layer anyway. Paint along the inner edge of the shapes, purposely overlapping it into the gaps. When done, lower the opacity somewhere between 20 and 30%. This now gives the effect that the shapes are popping out. Finally, to finish the texture, use a very small brush with the color white to make the highlight pop even further. There we are! Now we need to repeat this process on the shield itself, so let's start. Create a new layer and begin by tracing out the shapes on the shield. Make sure it's a dark color and that the brush isn't too thick. When you're done, fill in the gaps with the same color. Use a lighter color to paint along the outer edge of the shapes. Create a new layer and pick a lighter color to paint along the inner edge of the shapes. When done, lower the opacity on this layer so it looks like the shapes are popping out. I find that the color the gap is filled with to be a bit too dark and I like to have a brown tint. So using the magic wand tool I select the gap and fill it in with a lighter, more brown tinted color. Use the color picker to choose the color and then press Ctrl plus Backspace to fill in the selection. Now let's continue working on the texture. Pick a light brown color and paint along the outer edges of the shapes. Because the base color underneath is closer to grey than brown, you can create a new layer and fill the shapes in with a brown color so it resembles wood more. To keep the shading underneath, set the layer on overlay and lower the opacity a little bit. Now comes the final brush strokes. After creating a new layer, use a very small sized brush and a light color, then draw the light lines along the edges of the shape. There we are, we can now add some extra texture and light to the shield. To do this, let's start off by placing a grain effect on top of the shield. Use the lasso tool to draw a circular shape around the shield. Create a new layer and fill this in with a medium brown. When done, go into Filter, Filter Gallery and select the Comté Crayon Filter. Click OK. Then set the layer to Blending Mode Overlay and lower the opacity somewhere between 40 and 50%. Make sure to erase the edges that go outside of the shield. I also erase the sections where the curved lines are. Use the magic wand tool again to select the gaps and then after creating a new layer, select the gradient tool. Go into the gradient editor and pick the brown gradient available in the selection. Make a gradient in the selection, 
Try it several times until you like the pattern of it. Deselect by pressing Ctrl plus D on your keyboard and change to blending mode. I set mine to color burn and lower the opacity down between 40 and 50%. With the shapes painted over the shield, the shading is a little lost and we want to unify it a bit more. So select a large size brush, in this case I'm using one of the custom cloud ones we made, and I pick a relatively dark brown. Create a new layer and paint over the areas which would hold most shadows. I change the blending mode to multiply and lower the opacity on the layer between 40 and 50%. Repeat this process for the lighter areas with a lighter color. For this, I set the blending mode to overlay and lower the opacity to 50%. Remember to erase the brush strokes that landed outside of the shield. Hide the wood texture for now and darken the lines again on a new layer on top of the wood texture. This is to make the shape visible again. When done, unhide the wood texture and make sure to erase the dark line sections where the wood would actually overlap. And that's it. The shield is now complete. We'll take a look at the frame when we tackle the painting of metal, which we are going to do in the next video. We will be using textures and effects to enhance the metal materials in this illustration and work on the reflective aspect. Thank you for listening!